This is the other side of Kirk Franklin prank. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reckoning. 2024. The least one can say is that Cat Williams started 2024 with a bang. In a lengthy interview with Shannon Sharp, Williams explained why specific comedians get most Hollywood roles while others are ignored by the industry, and he words such as satanic, rituals, and Illuminati. In a 2013 interview, Williams stated, Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time, the press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. In the years that followed, Williams was involved in all kinds of strange, humiliating events and often received bad press. In fact, in a bizarre twist of fate, he was literally punched in the face by a teenager in a humiliating video that immediately went viral. <laughs> Tell me that's your child. <laughs> nah, he hit me first, bro. That's what happened back up off me, little boy. <laughs> he hit me first, bro. I was there, bro. I got some. Hey, what's up, bro? It's all good, bro. Hey, it's all good, bro. Hey, it's all good, bro. Also, he got arrested and jailed several times for petty crimes while notorious rapists such as P. Diddy remained free. Would that happen to him if he was on the right side of the industry? While Williams has been touring for decades while amassing a massive fan base, he was never helped by industry moguls. He is the owner of his tours, he manages every aspect of them, and he gets nearly zero mass media promotion. In his own words, he was never funded by them because that requires a sacrifice. However, he got close enough to the industry to understand how it truly functions. In short, Williams is clearly not afraid of being canceled. In this already legendary video, he fired shots at the likes of Kevin Hart, Ricky Smiley, Ludacris, and P. Diddy for being industry sellouts or gatekeepers. On several occasions, he also quickly mentioned some things that have massive implications. You can watch the full interview on Club Shay Shay's YouTube channel. Here are the most interesting parts of the interview. Wear the dress. When celebrities expose the industry, they're usually vague and they never name names, but Cat Williams spent a couple of hours being very specific while naming a whole lot of names. Right from the start, Williams attacked Ricky Smiley, a fellow comedian who co-starred with him in the movie Friday After Next. The first thing he mentioned about Smiley is that he dresses more often as a woman than he dresses as a man when performing. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Throughout the interview, Williams highlights the fact that most of his fellow black comedians have worn a dress at one point or another in their careers. Williams' observations caused many to take notice of this disturbing trend that has been going on for decades. Cat Williams is far from the first to notice this trend. Over 20 years ago, Dave Chappelle went on Oprah and described how Hollywood tried to coerce him into wearing a dress. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man and the movies in a dress at some point in their career. I'll be connecting them down like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. <laughs> they come in, it's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> and he put this dress on and it, huh? What? The prostitute? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with that. That, that should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So, well, if all the greats have done it, it's kind of hacky, right? You're right. So why don't we just not do it? Because I don't feel comfortable wearing a dress. Oh, come on, Dave. Listen, we, we got it all set up. We we're supposed to shoot. Every, every minute you waste costs this much money. You know, the pressure comes in. Huh. He 
He said, I'm not, I'm not wearing no dress, man. I'm funnier than a dress. Just give me something funny to say. I don't even wear no dress to be funny. What am I, Milton Berle? Blah, 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 blah. You know, we're going like this. And then finally he's like, ah, and he, he leaves. And then like the director comes, David, really would be great if you wear the dress. What is wrong? What is this, uh, Brokeback Mountain in here? So, <laughs> so then, <laughs> like, wear the, wear the dress. I don't want to wear the dress. I want to wear this dress. You know what I mean? This is, uh, oh gosh, this is so difficult. They leave. Now the producers comes, come on, David, would be so great. I mean, and then I started thinking about it. all the comics that I've seen. Man, you know, strong brothers, why, why are they putting us in these dresses? But the minute it was clear, I was adamant, I'm not wearing a dress. I'm not wearing the dress. All right, fine. Think of something else. With all of that being said, one can ask, why do they want these men to wear dresses? Well, it all comes down to an important agenda of the elite, the emasculation of society. In some ways, black comedians are cultural leaders and many look up to them as voices of their communities. Many of these comedians are exceptionally smart, strong, and charismatic. Therefore, the elites want to put them in dresses, feminize them, and ultimately humiliate them. Of course, black comedians are not the only targets of this agenda. As observed in countless previous articles, a ridiculous number of young male rappers have been parading around in dresses. When Williams mentions that Ricky Smiley wears dresses, he's not just being a hater. He's pointing out that Smiley sold out to a pernicious agenda. But he didn't stop there. Williams then alluded to something much darker regarding Ricky Smiley. And I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. While this last sentence went over most people's heads, the implications are rather insane. Here's a sad fact about Smiley. On January 29th, 2023, Smiley announced his 32-year-old son, Brandon Smiley, had died after being found unconscious in his Birmingham apartment. Brandon died after taking a combination of drugs, including fentanyl. Shortly after his son's death, Smiley reportedly went on the air and talked about Cat Williams stealing his role in a movie. Cat Williams wonders why Smiley was so concerned about a role after such a tragic event, and even implies that his son died as a ritual sacrifice to stay in the good graces of the industry. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom, and that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Godside. At one point, Williams talks about how he's been criticized in the past for talking about black celebrities such as R. Kelly. When I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I need to have nothing more of these. Amen, amen. Gee. Regarding why he got blackballed by the industry, Williams said, Because the people want to know, well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah, oh, because, I was because, that. because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing, you would tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that, I value that, I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know and they all know it. They all know it. After Williams called Kevin Hart an industry plant, Shannon Sharp asked if he's worried about being blackballed again since he's relentlessly attacking powerful people. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. 
they they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Williams probably did not use the word cabal randomly. It comes from the word Kabbalah and directly refers to a secretive elite that's obsessed with occult rituals. Then Kat discussed him catching hell for exposing Harvey Weinstein before the whole hashtag me too thing. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they <laughs> did to get <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> 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 and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. Here, Kat explains that he might be less successful than other comedians. However, those in the industry know that he didn't take shortcuts and he is not being fed by them. Because he is funded independently, Kat can speak his mind without fear of losing revenue. However, he is fully aware that his career involves him being very close to an extremely dark system. Not playing that role. During the interview, Williams explains that he often refuses to act in movie scenes that are either bizarre or degrading. For instance, in the movie Friday After Next, his character Money Mike was supposed to get raped in the bathroom. He told the producers to remove that scene because he considers that rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to. Also, he didn't want to go along with the elite's sick agenda of humiliation and emasculation. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right. where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. Then he explained that he turned down roles that eventually went to the likes of Kevin Hart, his arch rival whom he had been accusing of doing homosexual things for success for years. For a five year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out and then I can do it like it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual right it doesn't need that right. to be funny right mm -hmm. and, and and me saying that and them going oh yeah no problem and then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was Stepin Fetchett was a famous actor who often played the role of a lazy black slave. Kat therefore implies that these emasculating roles are a way of reducing these famous actors to merely industry slaves. Because of his reticence in acting out some scenes, the roles would eventually go to other actors who were happy to partake in the humiliation. When asked if he'd do another Friday movie, Kat said that a lot of people involved in the previous ones are gone. Then he dropped this bomb. Um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, not Smokey. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> Whew. Another celebrity who suddenly changed is Ludacris. Kat told a surreal story about him. 
Jones. Are you related to uh, Luda? No. Um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, and it had to be one or the other of us, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Now, <laughs> one person ended up with a light-skinned, ugly-faced wife that's never done a... Remember I told you that if I say that, it applied to seven people? Yeah. It's part of what they give you. Mad about it? How much money did they give? 200? Sir, Fast and Furious is on what number right 10. now? 200 million, I might need to get me one of the more women to look, to look, look the same. That's what they all end up saying at the end of the day. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay. It's all right. Kat later explained that the ultimate goal in any career is to be the boss, to make the decisions, and to be independent. He argues that he started his career that way, so there was no reason for him to ever stray away from that. He added, My goal was to get this far in Hollywood and still have a virgin asshole. <laughs> and I never had sucked a penis. That was my only goal. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm I so mean, can, freely. Can, can, I need, can I need another one? You, here, get your another Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you. Considering the persistent rumors surrounding P. Diddy and recent accusations, it's not impossible. Cat Williams said a lot of seemingly controversial and outlandish things. Some are easily verifiable and some are not. However, everything he said is fully in line with everything that has been discussed on The Vigilant Citizen for years. Since the interview, media outlets have been hard at work defending the industry darlings that Cat has exposed, and some, as usual, attacked him directly. In the interview, Kat said that all the deviants will be exposed in 2024. We hope he's there, and we're definitely there for it, because this satanic pedo crap has gone unchecked long enough. <laughs>